Hi guys, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. All right, so today's first block is going to be so easy that we're not even going to lay it out. Here is our block. It's 25 colors. This is the easiest. Well, we have done 25 colored blocks, but I was supposed to have like a ton of solids by now, but I don't have 25 different solids to work with. So I just went ahead and pulled 25 pieces of fabric that are two and a half inch squares. So instead of laying it out, all I'm gonna do now is just take this over to the sewing machine and sew it together. Because today we're doing something super simple. Well, at least this first block. So let's go to the sewing machine. Here we are at the sewing machine. I am not laying these out. So I am just going to do back to basics with you guys here on how I even do my chain piecing webbing thing that I do. So we're just going back to basics with this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two blocks of two totally different colors. I'm gonna put them right sides together and I am going to, ooh, I have black thread in here. I totally forgot to run some white. Give me two seconds. All right, so starting over, here we go. Put it under, right sides together, and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam. Leaving it on there, I'm gonna grab two more pieces, two more different colors. I'm gonna slide them under. So if you wanted to make a, say, coin quilt, um, it would probably be easy if you just started doing, making blocks like this, make a bunch of 25 patch blocks and then put them all together. Or what is it called? It's not actually coin, it's postage stamp quilt. Um, I mean, I don't know if there's an actual specific size that it's supposed to be, one, two, three, four, five. But um, in reality, it doesn't really matter because you're putting little squares together, making one um, solid thing. So now that I have five in there, I am going to break thread, come to the top, and I'm just going to do my normal pressing. So I'm just gonna go left, right, because that's the way it wanted to go. So I'll just do left, right, left, right, left. All the way down, just like this. And if you wanted to chain piece a bunch more, then I would say go ahead and do it. Just keep putting them together in sets of twos. Um, here we go. So I'm gonna just take another piece, totally different color because there's 25 different colors in this one. And we're gonna put it right sides together, run it through, grab another piece. Now let's put this green right there. Um, not really being picky, I'm just kind of putting them in just like however. We're gonna put this guy right here and just chain sewing them through, creating a web. Put this one right here. And one more, let's put this green guy, no, let's put this striped guy. <laughs> Notice I, I take a second to make up my mind where I want them to go, but there was no need to lay today's out. So again, I'm gonna do that same exact thing, whatever way I started. So these are going left, right, left, right, left. And I'm just gonna finger press them just like this. And since I didn't have to lay this out, that's why I'm recording this whole process for these because instead of putting you in fast forward, because I didn't have to take the extra time to lay them out. And as you guys know, I try to keep my 25 patch blocks videos under 40-ish minutes. So let's find another one. Let's put this guy there. Notice I'm calling my favorite guys. Why can't I say, or we say, all right, let's use this girl right here or this kid right here. Mm, let's put this green. I mean, we always say guy. Let's use this guy, that guy. Well, you know what? I got to change that one and start saying, let's put this girl here. Let's put this kid here, you know? <laughs> All right, so again, I'm just going to finger press left, right, 
left, right and left. And then I'm going to attach my final row of pieces. So let me just grab these, put them on this side because they're in my way. And again, I'm not going to be picky about these girls. I'm just going to stick them wherever they land. Up here. Notice I have not taken anything apart or moved it around. We need a pink one. Um, just hooking them all together. And that's this is the basics for every time I make these. Every single time. This is how they are sewn together. It makes it so much easier than anything. And you can apply this concept to larger blocks, to more pieces, and so on and so forth. So we're going to do this again, left, right, left, right, left. And then it's going to be ready for the turn of joining it together. So right there, and one more right there. So you can see it's very scrappy, very, very scrappy. We're going to take this bottom area right here, this bottom strip. We're going to put that right sides together. And since I finger pressed, not only are these now the same exact size, but you can see that my seams are actually opposite of each other since I finger pressed them. And technically, all you really need to do is line up the end and then feel for that seam, keeping it where it's supposed to be. And they're touching. There's no like uh, gap between them. So I could feel them touching. Oop, that one flipped on my way sewing this. So when you get those done, all you have to do is open them up. And for now, I'm just going to give them a finger press. But you can see that having them all exactly the same size, every single one of those seams meet up exactly where it's supposed to. Notice I said exactly like five times. My goodness. All right. So now that there's these two, we turn them over and put them on to that right there. If you line up your ends, it should be, again, the same exact size. So that way, when you start sewing, all you have to do is hold your piece. I could feel that there is no gap. The two end pieces are touching perfectly. And I just lay them down so that they don't flip over while I'm sewing it because that becomes a hassle. And then you have flipped seams and blah, blah, blah. So again, I'm just going to finger press these. I'm finger pressing them to the right, um, just like this. So you can see so far all my seams are going upward or to the right. Now I'm going to, at this point, you could still keep going this way, but to make it easier, I have always in every single one of these 25 patch blocks, turn them around and then took these two because there's no way to hook this like that. And I think I've shown that before. It's these two now on top like this. Then again, you're going to do that same thing by lining them up right here. So once your end is lined up, the rest of all these seams should nest beautifully. So I'm just making sure that it stays nice and lined up. One piece got turned. It always happens every time. The seams hit the lip right here on the... Oh my goodness, extension table. Wow, I just can't think today, can I? So sometimes these seams will flip when you hit this lip on the extension table, depending on what kind of table you have. Mine, they always do, and even on the Brother machine. So, all right, last piece. Never got anything messed up. Right sides together. Again, all you do is match your ends, and you probably wouldn't even need to hold those seams nested down because they should line right up. But I hold them just to make sure that nothing shifts because you could have shifting. But I mean, if you didn't want to, or your hand was tired, or just something, or you were reaching for something and you only had one hand, you could get away with just sewing it. Oops, throwing scissors now. You can get away with sewing it without holding it down and still be able to nest your seams. All right, so we're just going to finger press this again. I'm just finger pressing it up, which would be to my left because everything else was to the right when it was turned around. So you can see all of my seams naturally want to come this way. So let's take this over to the iron so that I can show you how to press it down nicely. We are not, I repeat, are not on my normal ironing surface. <laughs> so all we need to do now is 
once this is down like this on your ironing mat so that you can make sure that everything stays flat is when you go to iron it you can see that I have already finger pressed all these seams this way um, normally I would be showing you this direction but this the ironing mat is in a totally different um, area at this moment when it's like this you could take your hands and just run them with a little bit of pressure along those seams to make sure that they're staying facing up that the block is opened up as much as possible then take your iron lay it on here and just give it just a little tiny tug and roll it across those seams again put it down right here and just roll it across those seams just like that I'll just get those to stay down the way i want them and once i have them all facing down the way that i want them all i do is flip the block over so all my seams are still facing up this direction so when i iron or press from the top all I'm doing now, I'm, I'm going to add some steam, is just pushing them the way that they were pressed. Keeping it nice and flat. And now I move my iron around on it, making sure that the whole thing stays super flat. Although I doubt it will because this whole ironing mat, my little June Taylor mat, poor thing, it is bent. As you can see, it rocks. <laughs> yeah. They tend to bend after a while. So anyways, here's the block. Let's take it over and do a final peek at this one. All right, final peek. This was blowing away, so I kind of just shoved it up under there so it wouldn't blow. But there's our little drawing up here in the top corner, or it's not even in the corner, top center. And here is our final block. And I'm gonna lay it right here in the center. And look, and it is 10 and a half right here. And it is sitting at the 10 and a half here. So if you use two and a half, inch squares and you put five together you will have a ten and a half inch block now just remember every single time if you make a ton of these with 25 different colors um, on every single block that you make just make a ton of these and put say 10 blocks across by 10 blocks down you could easily have yourself a full-size bed worth of just postage stamp quilt because they are super or coin quilt whatever you want to call it um, they're small and that's just how it works. But now that we have finished the easy back to basics with how this is done, let's move on to the actual hard block, I guess. It's not really hard. Let's just move on to it. So I have left you down here. Normally I don't do it this way, but we're doing it this way for this video because of the angle I have <gasps> stuck myself into. All right. So here's the photo. It is friendships stars creating a like a spirally thing yeah kind of weird right anyways so you need 20 of the purple and or whatever color you're using as your background and then four blue as you can see four orange four pink and four green um unfortunately i didn't have another one of these in green i thought i did i looked but i didn't so we're just going to use a green with polka dot because like it really matters <laughs> It's all going into the same big, huge, scrappy quilt in the end. All right, so five colors, 20, four, 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 and four. Now the separation part. So I'm going to stick that under there so it doesn't blow away. I do know that two of these purples for each one of these colors is going to get pulled out. Oh, I'm in, not in an area that you can see. So two, two, and two. So it's going to go two. Um, two stay out, two of these, and two of the blue, which I'm not in the screen for, and I'm very sorry, and then two of the green. All those will be half square triangles, okay? Now the last ones. We're going to look at the chart so that you can see this. The last ones is an orange and a pink is going to be a half square triangle, okay? Then a pink and a green is going to be a half square triangle. And then, uh, where are we at? A green and a blue is gonna be a half square triangle. And then an orange and a blue, which would be the only two left. So there we have it. The rest of these are gonna all stay solid, the rest of my purples. And we're going to just leave those right here so that nothing blows away from my fan. 
and take this lovely pile right here and turn it all into half square triangles. So let's go to the machine. Here we are at the machine. I definitely need to move my magnetic seam guide out of the way for this. All right, what we're gonna do is here's all my pieces. I'm just gonna keep them up here with me. Wrong sides together like this, blah, blah, blah. So that you can have a valley instead of a mountain because we're sewing in the valley. You're gonna stick this on here. You can draw your line as well, or you can use seam tape like my new magical tape that I use now is seam tape, which you can find in, well, I think all of my affiliate links, which are in the description below the video, should all sell seam tape. Um, we're gonna sew that from the corner to the corner. So you can draw your line if you need to from corner to corner, or, Wow, this is a crooked one. Somebody asked me once, uh, how do I cut my pieces so straight and accurate? Well, they're not always perfectly accurate because sometimes I do make these cuts when I'm half asleep and I end up with some wonky ones. But let me tell you, I have had a few since we started this whole series that I've actually paused the video, removed the bad piece, and put a new one in. <laughs> But you guys don't see those th things because it's the magic of editing. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead now and sew all of these through to make my half square triangles corner to corner. And like I usually do through this part, I'm going to go ahead and put you in fast forward and turn on some tunes. So here we go. Now, I do want to address real quickly, like another commonly asked question with these. What am I doing with all of these little cutoffs? Well, I'll tell you, I'm sewing them together. So let's take these to the sewing machine so that you can see. All right, once at the sewing machine, this is what I'm doing with them all. Now, I don't do this every time I sew these videos, but what I'm doing is keeping them together the way that they were chopped off. So trying to keep them lined up. The first thing I do is I'm gonna stick this in with one of my points up and my squared edge at the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead, so a quarter inch seam through that. Then I'm gonna flip this next one over because this one I had the blue on the top, now I have the purple. And now I'm gonna sew the squared side in like this. And I will repeat with all of these because, well, I'm showing you the extra step in this video. So again, I'm gonna put my color first. My next one is purple. Wow, I do have some fabric shredding. And then a purple goes through, just like that. Those are my randoms. Here's my matchy matchy ones. Again, I am gonna go point side in Everything's still the way I chopped it off. And then we're gonna go upside down like this with the purple in. And I'm doing them in the sets that I've cut them, although these will be different. So some of my pieces will in fact be scrappy and most of them are going to be the colors that made my half square triangles in the first place. So I'm just lining these up and sewing them through so that you can see how I do this 
in my little extra part of this video. So these ones, let's see, this is pink and green. And then this one is, I don't know, let's do, yeah, we'll do the pink and orange. So I'll have pink on the opposite side. And then this one is blue and green. Slide that through. And they're gonna put the blue on the top this time so that it ends up on the opposite side. Now the only other thing I do is they're in sets of two. I snip them apart in sets of two like this, just like this. And now that they're in sets of two, all I have to do now is finger press one side or the other. So I'm choosing purple. So both of these will get pressed towards the purple. They're hooked together, can't lose their spot. Put them right sides together, nest my little seams, and sew them through. And when I'm done, these should make little two and a half inch squares. I didn't. I, I don't really think they're go, all going to be exact because it depends on how I cut off my extra seam. But the fact of the matter is, I'm making them all exactly the same, and if I have to trim them all exactly the same by the end, then I will. But this is using up all of my waste instead of throwing it away because, well, you guys, if you've been watching my channel long enough, you know that I really don't waste much fabric. And the only time I ever do is if a pattern wastes that much fabric. And even then, I try to save as much of it as I can, the cutoffs and stuff, and I make stuff with it. So like this one, this one was shorter. So one piece got cut different than the other when I trimmed them apart. And that's going to happen throughout this whole thing. But I'm still going to continue putting them together when I do my final project with all these pieces. And there'll be enough pieces for me to at least get um, a pretty good size little quilt out of them. Oops, I don't want that folded up. There we go. Just back it up a little bit. All right, and again, I'm just... These are my scrappy ones now. I'm just going to press them towards the pink. You can see some of my will be like this throughout the quilt because I only had one half square triangle, you know, or whatever in my little drawings that I made up. All right, and the last one, just pressing it towards the blue because the blue is the color in both the corners. And I could have mixed them up more, but this is mixed up plenty. It's just fine. It worked good. And then once these are all done, just like this, I separate them. And then I'll take them over to the iron. Let's just do that and then press them and show you. All right, so here's my little pieces. All I'm doing is, since I already finger pressed, they should be laying pretty darn flat. All I have to do is roll them back like this, and then I have cute little hourglass blocks or quarter square triangle blocks. Whatever you want to call it, that's what these are. So there's those. And then when I am completely done, they go into a folder at the... Um, where I have all my drawings in. So I'll show you at the end of this video my folder that I've been putting these in. But for now, I'm just gonna leave them over here in the corner and we're gonna lay this block out. All right, my friends. All right, so let's lay this block out so that we know what we're doing. So here's the chart down here in the corner for you. We're gonna stick that on it so that it doesn't blow away. <laughs> we're gonna start with a regular square in each, oh, all three like this. So each row, each every other row is going to have three of these. And there's probably one extra of these because um, I, I already knew there was one extra. And then where else do we have solids? We have a solid here, 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 and there. Oh, there wasn't one extra. Maybe I already stuck it in my bin. All right. So I have now created a checkerboard. Now to insert our pieces according accordingly to the diagram. We got pink facing up, pink facing down. Then we have pink and orange, pink and orange, pink and orange, orange being down, pink being up. 
and then pink and green. So pink being down, green being up, just like that. And now let's move on to blue because that's the next one in my hand. So orange goes down, blue goes up. Orange goes up facing that way. Orange goes up facing that way. So you could already see this butte of a block coming together. She's going to be pretty. All right, now let's do this green because, oh, this is green and blue. So this is actually going right there. Then the purple and blue is the next in my hand. So that'll go right here. And then another purple and blue, which blue is facing down that way. Look at this little spinning wheel of friendship. All right, it's a beautiful wheel of friendship. That's what it is. So there it is. They are all correct, but I'm going to check one more time before we sew these together. Oh, and I didn't even realize it, that you guys are not in the screen fully. Look at me. I'm just a mess today. So we have solid pink facing down, solid green facing down, pink facing up, pink facing down, green facing up, green facing down, solid pink facing up, orange down, solid green up, blue down, solid. Then we have the orange facing up, then a solid orange facing down, blue facing up, solid blue facing down, solid orange up, solid blue up, solid. All we have to do now is sew it together. So what we're going to do is that same procedure as the first time, except instead of me laying, last time I didn't lay it out, this time we're laying it out. I'm going to take this row right here and this row right here. So row, column, same thing, one and two. We're going to be sticking these right sides together like this. We're not going to turn anything. We're going to keep it the way it is. And since there are solids mixed into this whole thing, I'm always going to press towards the solid. So instead of a whole row going right or a whole row going left, it's going to go right, left, right, left, right, or left, right, depending on which order I'm in. But that way, they'll, all these half square triangles will always be facing a solid, which makes it so easy. So we're going to sew down this seam, which is on the right side, hooking these all together. Same procedure as before by opening them up. Obviously, we would be opening up this piece first, adding this, that, this, that, and this, and then opening those up, adding this next column, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go over to the machine and sew these, except I'm going to put you in fast forward with some music while I do so, because you've already learned how to put it together from the first um, block. So let's take all this over towards the sewing machine and then take you over to the sewing machine and start sewing. So there's the finished block. There is the photo. Obviously, the finished block looks better than the photo, like every time. So there it is. Let's measure it. It is 10 and a half and 10 and a half. It is 10 and a half inches the way it's supposed to be. 
So there that is. There is the photo. Let me show you the book and then I'll finish by showing you the two blocks together. Okay, so here is all the blocks we've made thus far. Right here, a ton of those. Those go in the book as well. Then I have this folder. It's just an old beat up folder. But inside the first part of it, not only do I have the drawing, the paper little grids, that's the word, but I have this little folder. And as you can see, I haven't been really sewing them together because, well, I'm a little on the lazy side lately and I've been working on other things. But you can see these are old blocks we've already done. Inside here, there are some, you can see they're buried in here, the ones that I have been doing. But what I do is I sew these pieces together and then the sewn or unsewn ones, they just get kind of, uh, what is the word? Static clingy to this. Ooh, that's really staticky. All right, and then I just go ahead and stick those in there. I empty as much air as I can out of it. And oh, they just, there's so many. Can you imagine? There is at least 16 more weeks of these blocks to do. <laughs> I really have to get a, a hold of myself because sneak peek guys. Oh wait, you're not gonna see him. Uh, from here, where are we at? Right there. All about right here or so. All that is left to do. Yep, mm -hmm, that's right. Lots more to do. So, all right, where were we? The two blocks finished. Okay, so here are the two finished blocks. You can see total scrappy 25 patch block with 25 colors. There's the photo. And then we have our um, a round of friendship, you know, or whatever I said it was earlier. I don't know. I, I like the round of friendship. And that one was five colors. So they are now done. And it's time to move on to the next. But before we do, what I've been doing in my book is I check them off. Oop. I give them a check mark so that I know that I've already done these for a video. <laughs> because I'll end up making it again because, you know, I forget so easily. So there we have it. Two blocks. Don't forget to check out the video uh, playlist right here for the 25 patch blocks. As well, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, somewhere, oh, right there is going to be a subscribe button. Don't forget to do that. Like my videos on the way out. And I'll see you next 25 patch block. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.